Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another Books Weekly. For those of you who might be new to the channel, um, on Sunday I do a Books Weekly and I discuss the books that I've either finished from a previous week or started last week or read last week. And the first book I want to talk to you about is the book that I finished from the previous week and that is Gather the Daughters by Jenny Melamed. Jenny Melamed is a young American writer. She lives in Seattle and before she became a writer she worked as a psychiatric nurse and she also did research at the University of Washington and her research topic was um, child abuse. I mentioned that because the main theme of the novel is child abuse, especially sexual abuse of young girls. So even though I don't do trigger warnings, I wanted to tell you that upfront because if you don't want to read about that topic, you should not pick up that novel. Uh, the novel is set on a remote island where a religious group lives. They escaped some event from the mainland and the mainland is only referred to as wastelands. We don't know what happened, at least not in the beginning. We will learn at the end what really happened. Um, and this religious group is uh, claims that their forefathers escaped the event on the mainland and came to the island to live there and live out their religious beliefs. Now, the belief system, the religious belief system is very rigid. Men have the power, they rule the island, and women, girls, are only there to marry, bear children, and serve their husbands. The children, the, the girls, are married off very young. As soon as they get their first period, the summer after that uh, is the so-called summer of their fruition, where they meet the men on the island, men who can marry, and the girls are 14, 13, 14, 15. Men's are, the men are older, at least 17 to 25, um, and then the girls are married. Um, there's also, uh, it's hinted right in the beginning, but it's not a spoiler if I tell you one of the other cornerstones of their religious beliefs is that the fathers do have sex with their daughters until they get their first period. It's not something that is discussed widely, but it's one of the things that this religious group believes in, that the, there's a special bond, quote-unquote, between father and daughter, and the execution of this bond means that the fathers have sex with their daughters from the age, it's not specified, but from a very young age on. Um, the story is told by uh, a four or five girls from the island. Uh, Vanessa, she is the daughter of a wanderer. The wanderer are, uh, are men in the group who are allowed to go to the mainland in order to look for supplies. Uh, there's Janie who starves herself in order not to get her period and not to get married off. We have Caitlin whose father is not only uh, having sex with her like all the other fathers, but is also beating her. Um, um, and we have Amanda, who is, when the novel opens, just pregnant. She's 14 and just pregnant with her first child. So the, the, the point of view switch between those girls and the main plot is um, that the girls, one of the girls, Caitlin, at a certain point, sees something she's not supposed to see, which will trigger events. Uh, the girls will start to revolt. They will start to want to find out what really happened um, on the wasteland and uh, whether they can escape. Uh, it's a very slow plot and the novel is, well, it's not thin. Um, so it, it's quite slow paced. Um, and uh, I had a couple of issues uh, with the, the plot development. Um, because I thought the middle was dragging on very long. We switch perspectives from various girls and it, it's, it's quite, uh, although it's a fast read because it's the, the writing is very easy to get into and, and the setting and everything is done well so you can, you know, you can read it fast, but the plot is quite slow. 
um, that was one of the things that I didn't enjoy reading. Um, um, some other issues that I had was that I did not really find it very believable that this group of uh, believers came to the island um, um, and they were all pedophiles and the, the women didn't mind at all. So I, I thought this was not very well explained because it seems as if that was something that was happening right from the start. So it was not that they were already on the island and the women couldn't go anywhere uh, because there was no means of escaping. So I, I, I didn't find that very believable. I, I can understand that obviously Melamed wanted to make sexual abuse of girls a, a theme and so she made that a premise but I didn't I didn't find it very very believable how the this religious group was set up um, and I had major issues with the ending um, which I yeah I, I can could only discuss if I spoil you um, but I would be interested if anybody of you will read or has read the book what you thought of the ending Overall, I would say it's a, it's a good debut novel. Uh, it certainly shows that Jenny Melamed can write. Um, she also had the guts to tackle a really difficult, controversial subject and make it the main theme of a book. Um, but for me, as a very plot-oriented reader, it was not an entirely satisfying read plot-wise. But if you, are, if you want to explore a, a novel with a really controversial theme uh, set in a dystopian future, uh, looking from the perspective of various girls on that theme and what happens to them, then you might want to pick it up and I'm certainly interested to know what you thought of it. The next book I read was a reread for me, and that was Yoko, Yoko Ogawa's *The Housekeeper and the Professor*, a Japanese novel from 2003, translated into English by Stephen Snyder in 2009. I read this book, or I reread this book, uh, for a Goodreads book club that I recently joined, and that's the Read Around the World book club in which we read a book from a different country every month and the book has to be written by a woman from that country. The book club was set up by Mel. She's also a booktuber. Um, her booktube channel is Mel's Bookland Adventures. I will leave a link to both the Goodreads group and Mel's channel down below because if you don't, if you haven't yet subscribed to Mel, you should certainly do it because she discusses a, vi a wide var variety of books in a really thoughtful but also thought-provoking manner. I, I, I always learn about books that I hadn't heard of when I watch her channel, so it's, it's really worth it. Um, the um, Yoko Ogawa is a Japanese writer, as I said, her, she's very well recognized uh, in Japan, but also translated, and as August is Woman in Translation Month, you should probably check it out. As I said, I didn't like it very much the first time when I, uh, I read, read the book. I read this edition. This is the German edition translated by Sabine Mangold um, with a different title, uh, The Secret of the... Uh, das Geheimnis der Eulerschen Formel. I should say the German title in German now, should I? Um, and I thought the translation read very translated, um, but in the reread I, I read the English edition and I liked it much more. The book is, you are not surprised, about a housekeeper and a professor and also the housekeeper's son. Uh, the professor has um, a mental, uh, a brain uh, uh, yeah, disease, he had an accident uh, years back and the result is that he can only remember things that happen now for 80 minutes. So if you visit him and you leave and you come back two hours later, he won't remember you. Um, he was a professor of mathematics and he still can remember that because that was all before the accident. And the book, um, even though there is not much happening, there's not much plot, that was probably also a reason why I didn't enjoy it that much the first time, but I knew that going in for the reread. Uh, the book is about the friendship of those three people, the housekeeper, her son and the professor. 
um, and mathematics is the bond between them. And if you didn't like maths as in school, like a lot of people didn't, you will still enjoy the book. If you want to read a very quiet novel uh, with not much uh, plot about a very difficult friendship and a very special friendship, because how can you be friends with somebody who cannot remember you when you come back the next day? It's very quietly written also, and it's yeah, it explores that theme really well. So if you're interested in, in that theme of friendship and if you're not too scared off by the fact that there is some math in the book, you should probably check it out. The next book um, is a German book, so I'm not going to talk about it that long because I have no idea how many viewers I have who actually read German. And that is Ulrike Edschmidt, Ein Mann der Feld, which means A Man Who Falls. Uh, Ulrike Edschmidt is a very well-known German writer, who unfortunately hasn't been translated uh, into English. She was born in 1940 and she writes fiction and non-fiction, also uh, about politics. She wrote a book uh, about a terrorist who was shot dead in 1975. Um, and this book is um, an autobiographical novel um, about a couple who uh, in uh, 1986, uh, while renovating their new house, the man falls off the leather, uh, the the um, ladder. Hence, a man who falls uh, and breaks um, his uh, neck and is confined to a wheelchair first. And he learns to walk. You see a picture here. That's a picture of the man. She took that photo when he were, when he can w uh, walk with crutches. So it's I, I really liked it. It's it's uh, not only. Um, in a very quiet, subtle way describing what happened and what happened after the fall, because the book goes from 1986 until uh, the early 21st century. But it's also telling us the story of uh, Berlin and how Berlin changed between the late 1980s and now. So if you read German if you are interested in exploring German authors, then I can certainly recommend it. And for all of you who can only read English, you're missing out. I'm sorry. If any publisher is watching, buy the book, translate it into English. It's a very good book. And the last book I want to mention is the book that I've just started. And it's also a German novel, but this one has been translated into English. And like I said, August is Women in Translation Month. So... Uh, it's Judith uh, Shalansky, uh, The Giraffe's Neck. It, this is the German uh, edition, but the English looks exactly the same, and the title is just the literal translation of, of the German title. It has been translated in 2014 by Sean Whiteside, Sean Whiteside sorry, and the, the, the original is from 2011. Um, this book is about a teacher, Ingrid Lomark, who has been teaching biology for decades and she believes in evolution and you have to adapt. Um, that's what I know. Um, I haven't, you know, I've just started. Uh, and then she develops feelings for one of her, her students and everything crumbles around her. That's what I remember uh, from the blurb. Um, I, I like Judith Chalansky. I read previous books by her, and she has a very dark humor. So I expecting, I'm expecting I'm expecting some very dark humor here as well. Um, so this was it for my books weekly this week. I hope you've enjoyed it, despite all the maths and um, the German. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Leave comments down below as always. Tell me what you are reading at the moment, and I will see you again soon in my next video. Bye bye.